This playthrough is rated M for Mature. What does God want with the starship anyway? Greetings and salutations viewers, while we're here with the finale of Shadow Hearts. In the last episode, we finished off the rest of the pits, we got our father's coat and formed together to form Voltron, I mean the Seraphic Radiance. Let's take a look at the library for that. Uh, the Seraphic Radiance, the most evil fusion monster. No Homonixer has ever fused successfully with this monster. A successful fusion gives Homonixers the power to form... Dis decide? What? I don't... Yeah, I don't... I think that's another glitch in translation. I, I assume it's the ability to decide fate or whatever, but... Uh, and interesting enough, in the library, I've got all of them except for three. Now, two are for the final bosses of the game, and one is for some random enemy in the Kuhai Tower I accidentally missed. But you have to go through the new, uh, replay the game with, well, New Game Plus is a misnomer on that. But anyway, you get to keep your library, and I'll be able to fight that enemy there. But uh, I'll do that episode when I show all the library and all the NPCs for that. Uh, but yeah, we fought, we fought most of them. The only one I'm missing is, was it 45, I think is the one I'm missing, other than the bosses? Yeah, I accidentally missed that one. Oh, well. And on treasure chests, I've actually got 99% of the treasure chests, the, the the ones that are loose in the world, and somehow I missed one. I don't know where which one I missed. It must have been a lottery ticket or something random like that, like early in the game. I wouldn't be surprised, but I got most of them. So, But anyway, this is my final party for this, though you can choose whoever. It's strongly suggested to keep Alice in the party because of our auto heal or full heal, but if you're a high enough level, you could probably use Yuri and use one of the um, his... Uh, fusions to do that as well. Um, Haley might be a good substitute for some occasions because he's got really good targeted healing, but he doesn't have a um, really a good all heal. Same with Zhu Zhen. Zhu Zhen's more of a support, uh, would be a support magic user, but with his final ability he can still do decent damage. Um, same with all of them, but I like using Keith just because I like using the vampire. Uh, I also got Keith's final abilities in the game. The gift, he gets that at 49. Um, and I haven't shown off Larvae, which I'll show that off during the final battle of the game. Um, yeah, I'll, Alice has all of her abilities. Uh, I've put Chernabog, Amon, and Seraphic Radiance, but I really, I'm just going to use Seraphic Radiance. But, you know, if you don't have Seraphic Radiance, use Amon. If you don't, use Chernabog, the Light Fusion, and maybe the uh, uh, Bull Fusion might be a, a good ability to use. All right, so for accessories, I strongly suggest... Um, you don't have to do this, but it'll be a pain in the butt if you don't do this. So make sure to equip crucifixes on them, uh, on everyone, so that any of the status afflictions that you can equip, whether ring or otherwise, won't you won't have to worry about. Um, other than that, uh, if you're not worried about SPs and you've got plenty of pure items to heal, you don't have to equip these, but it'll make it a lot easier. So equip the willpowers, because the bosses can do half SP. That hurts mainly Alice more than anything. And then finally, whatever you want to do, I'm going to use mines, uh, the Mind's Eye to improve my attack damage with Yuri. Uh, same with Alice, I'm going to, since she's not going to be physically attacked too often, being in the back, and because I can heal very often, I'm going to remove the cotton panties. I know, I know, you're probably thinking why, but I'm going to. And I'm going to equip her with, keep her on the priest earrings just so she can cast more spells regularly with the MP consumption reduced. Um, yeah, I got Yuri up to 62. I wasn't trying to do that. I wasn't trying to get him like super high level because you could easily do this in the 50s and beat this. But when I, I was trying to get Keith to 49, so that way I could, you know, show off his final abilities in the game. And Alice is at 57. Yeah, look at their stats. Like, he's got max uh, almost, well, you can't get 100% hit in avoidance or whatever. In avoidance, 99, that's also another misnomer. You can still miss attacks. Uh, because based off the enemy's avoidance and hit percentages. I forgot how that actually works, but I've got the max ability to do, to do that. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think even at max hit and max avoidance, I think it rounds out to like a 50% miss chance. Or it might even be less than that. I haven't actually gone over the details of that, but yeah, we're maxed out on that. Uh, Alice has uh, got max hit for all of her abilities, except not so much the avoidance part. But anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and... Uh, equips um, a willpower on Keith. Yeah, he's another character that probably doesn't need to worry about too much because of his high SP. Uh, the more the dangerous part would be you'd want willpowers if you have like Haley or uh, Margaret because they have really low SP. I guess Zhu Zhen does as well. Um, there's also another thing I didn't go over the course of the game. I show, I talked about them but I never actually used them in combat is the um, the seal abilities. Now, what those are, I mean, obviously we talked about them, they raise their 
your stats temporarily or permanently. The thing is, um, you can use these as is in, uh, in the battle, and what it'll do is it'll increase it your whatever stat to the minimum. So if I use the seal of life without using it in battle, it'll increase it to three. However, as you can see there, it's got a judgment ring thing. If I use it in battle and hit max, I can get, well, I think if even if you just hit the ring in general, you get four because there's a risk of missing in combat and that's always dangerous, I guess. But if you hit the red, you can get its max, which in this case would be five. Um, I just forgot to use all these, but at this point I don't really have to use them anymore, but that's something to think about when you're using them. So try to use them in battle. And if you do miss, you don't lose the item. So it's just obviously the danger of battle. You know, you might get killed or whatever. So I bought a few third keys off screen. I also got um, some uh, mana extracts, although I'm probably a bit overkill for that for the boss because I'm pretty o OP for this part of the game. But, you know, you got to go out with a bang, right? We, I mean, we are going to confront Albert and possibly God, depending on if we do this in time. So. All right, after this, it's no turning back. So you can change out your party members, but your equipment and your uh, what your accessories are can't be changed, so keep that in mind too. But what I've got is pretty solid, so let's head on up there and confront Albert before the god drops. Hello, Albert. Where are you? Welcome, one and all, to the glorious throne, Nemito, left to us by the ancient gods. Albert, you old fart. It's been fun, but we're finally going to be able to put an end to this. <laughs> I'm impressed that you of all men were the last to remain standing in my way. Perhaps this was all destiny, even, at the moment we met on the train. Just tell me one thing. What will you do if you win this fight? Couldn't say, really. I'll create a new world perfected to God's will. A pure world without deceit or defilement. Would such a world be any fun? Of course it'll be fun. It'll be a wondrous place. Isn't that the whole idea of, like, the Matrix movie made a comment about this, where they actually, the original, when the, uh, uh, when the robots made the Matrix, they actually made it perfect, but people couldn't handle pure perfection, so they had to pur purposely put flaws in it, so it was believable to people, so. I really wanted to show it all to all of you. I see. In that case, fine. Let's promise then, no matter who wins, no hard feelings, eh? Leave the surviving world to the mercy of fate. Fawn, I'll promise you. There need only be one thought that determines the course of the planet. <laughs> now there's my Albert. Glad we agree on something. Let's get started. We bet our entire future on this fight. That's what I was waiting to hear. Let us commence the final battle. For the fate of the world itself, it's boss time against Albert Simon for the final time of the game. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, and he's turned into his final form, which is... Yeah, Holy Crest would do, does a decent amount of damage, but it does do the whole half SP thing. But anyway, he turns into the Messiah. Uh, he ain't my Messiah. <laughs> what happened to your Messiah now, Jesus or Moses? So but anyway, we're going to change the, the Seraphic Radiance. You could use anyone here because Messiah has no class, so any skills, abilities, or whatever will work fine on him. Uh, he's got 6,000 HP, uh, almost max MP at 990. He drops the Silver Hand and drops 60,000 experience for it. But why do we need experience? We're about to beat the game, right? <laughs> But anyway, let's show off some of my skills that I've learned as a Seraphic Radiant. So we got a couple of uh, abilities. We've got Forever One. Yeah, look at the cost of all the spells. Me, me goodness. Uh, Forever One raises all of our physical and uh, special attack and defenses. So let's go and do that. Not that I need to. This is probably overkill. But I just want to show the skill off. It's so beautiful. Yeah, 30% agility went up, special attack, special defense. Man, it's just a pure buff all around. I mean, technically, I don't even need to uh, 
heal if I don't want to, so. Uh, yeah, we'll just cast Advent on this guy, so. Oh, yeah, because my agility went out, the rain goes by a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah, that's the only problem with that is I'm so used to the slow version of it that, uh, um, that it'll throw, it might throw me off a little bit, so. Yeah, just basically use anything on him, you know, physical attacks, special attacks, whatever. This, I wouldn't, and you might consider start using your items, too, on this, although I'd probably wait a bit on the item part. So, all right, let's go ahead and use uh, cast larvae to show that off. I'm just going to hit. I'm not trying for critting on this because it's too fast for me. So this is why I usually don't like casting agility buffs on myself because I'm so used to the slow version of it, it throws me off. Anyway, yeah, you summon a bunch of larvae to attack. Yeah, not a ton of damage. I prefer physical attack in this case. So this is why you want uh, uh, crucifixes on everyone because of the stats have rally ability. All right, let's go ahead and show off for tomorrow. Balls of light, I guess. Nice. Yeah, see, you know, technically with the Seraphic Radiance, you don't even have to use Alice if you don't want to, but Alice is actually pretty, um, at her level, because she's required for a good deal of the game, she's got a decent level that uh, her uh, POW stat is pretty, her intelligence stat's decent enough where she does like over 500 damage with Advent. You could, you, if you don't have Advent, obviously you could just leave her as a buff support because her Bless Light only does like maybe a little under 200. So, all right, let's show off uh, Keith's final ability, the Gift. God of Death gives all enemies a little present. Oh, the only problem with this is it's an instant death ability, which really won't do much to this guy, but I want to show it off anyway, so. Death himself. Where'd he come from? Castlevania? It still does damage. It's just, it's big thing is, is it supposed to in-skill? Uh-oh. Triple exclamation point. What does this do? It's the make everyone's HP one. Yeah. So. Or one person. Or yeah, no, everyone's. Oh no, one person. Sorry. There is no ability in the game that does that as far as I'm aware of, so. All right, let's finally use the final uh, spell of his for the children. This is the, this is the question mark ability. You have to get him to go berserk to unlock, so. Oops. Dang it. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. It's not a big deal. I pressed it a little bit too fast. I'm, my mind's still stuck on, like, uh, the 10 spin ring form of it when that thing went super fast. You'd think I'd be a master of it because of doing that, so you'd think I'd be a master of super speed, but, yeah. That's just how it is, man. I'm actually kind of hoping the that ability wears off pretty soon, so I can. Uh... Oops, I missed a third attack. Uh, I'm, I, I know generally where uh, Keith's rings are. It's just this one's a little bit faster now, so you know, back to Holy Crest again. Oh yeah, I gotta be keep aware of myself for the purposes of SP loss and everything with that. So, but luckily I'm such a high level now that Holy Crest isn't one of those things I have to heal every turn if I don't want to. So. This fight would be more dangerous for Alice because of her SP, but I actually ended, did end up using a couple of the, uh, um... Oh, I did again. Dang it. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? I I'm, like, so adamant of trying to hit it that, uh... That I'm going a bit overboard with it, because it's not that much faster. It's just a little faster, you know? I will show it off, folks. Don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna, oh, I mean, this is the final boss. We've got nothing else to worry about here, so we can just go all out, right? Yeah, sorry, some of these attacks take forever to do, but this is the only way Alice can get a bit, decent amount of damage in, so. Ow, oh, I missed his second attack. It's it's a really big ring, too, to, to do that, so. Yeah, if he's doing this again. Thought we got Ark ready to go for that, so. Yeah, the only problem with this fight is some of the animations take a little while, but that's eh, fine. It's not the worst. I'm trying to think of the worst game. Probably Final Fantasy VII, actually. It probably is the worst when it comes to that because of, uh, um, like, Knights of the Round and stuff like that. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, my goodness. What is wrong with me? 
Stop it. I need to, I need to wait for that thing to, uh, the agility thing to disappear so I can do it fine after that. I'm actually kind of frustrated with myself because I, I, I can do it. I've done it before. But... Yuri, what's what's the point of you being seraphic radiance? If you can, uh, maybe I might just attack next turn because we're not completely um, done with this. So. There we go. I think I'll save for tomorrow for later. Let's uh, just attack regularly for now. Yeah, unfortunately, we've pretty much seen everything Messiah can do. There's not much else we can do at this point. It's all about just you know finishing finishing him off and saving the world. You know, who knew it'd be so easy to do just beat beat the crap out of each other and that's all that's all it takes how's everyone's sp looking i don't know still pretty good so oh my goodness oh it is just a day it is a day to be alive what a day for a daydream no oh, he's got maxed out on advent oh, he's... man apparently it just i'm just dropping the ball on Yuri today in terms of his uh, abilities and stuff like that. So It's because I'm, I'm over-correcting for the, the high agility. So I'm pressing the button like way before, but yeah, it looks like he's almost done. I hit that a little too. What you doing? What's that? What's that new ability? Yeah, it's the grace ability, which heals himself completely, well, completely-ish. Well, at least if, at least almost one attack from Yuri is almost enough to negate his heal. It's almost like, if I could actually hit Yuri's like, uh, like attack cues, we, this would be over already. The game would be over because he would be able to do like a thousand damage every time I hit him with Seraphic Radiance. You know? Well, that's with the buff as well. I om I weirdly almost wish the buff didn't actually have agility added to it, if that makes sense for you. No, we almost got a thousand with, with uh, Keith there. Not bad, actually. Yeah, here we go again. And who gets hit this time? Is it gonna be Yuri again? No, it's Keith this time, huh? Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. You know, I, I, what I'm doing, viewers, is I'm playing hard mode, so I'm uh, I'm purposely not using Yuri to his full extent against this guy, so we can have a bit of a challenge. Nah, it's just, <laughs> I'm just doing really, really bad with my hitting. Ow, just smack her. Is he using his hand to hold himself? I think he is. There we go. He can be taught. Thus, the world is saved, thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. I mean, Seraphic Radiance. Here we go. Clang, clang, silver hammer. Anyway, everyone gets a level. Where'd all the party members go? <laughs> oh, splendid work, I must admit. You got me this one time. Yuri, you've all... You've all of you have chosen your fate. The coming wintry age will be a harsh one, the beginning of the hell that humans have chosen. But none of this will come true unless you defeat the god that is arriving soon. But it should be fine. With people as strong as you, humans may yet be able to overcome their weaknesses. If you really think you can arise victorious, then take my blessing too. May my soul assist you. Albert. Let me take you to God's throne with the last drop of my power.
farewell. And we got fi one final change of party members if you want to be in the heal completely, but yeah, we can't change our accessories because like uh, Albert said, we have to encounter God himself or whatever they consider God to, uh, um, to save the world. Can we do it? Where are we? The stratosphere? Look how tiny the temple is from here. This really is the end of the earth. What the? Hey, what's going on? Could the could that be? <laughs> so it would seem. That is God. Yeah, now things are getting interesting. All right, God. If someone asks if you are God, you say yes for final boss time against Meta God himself. I, anyway, he's got 12,500 HP, 999 MP, and he's neutral on everything, so go all out on him. Hopefully you have your willpowers and crucifixes ready to go. But anyway, let's go Seraphic Radiance for the finale. And I'm not buffing this time because I don't like the speed part. Even though it's good, I'm doing terrible at it. But anyway, let's go for the children so I can actually do it this time. Yeah, we do max damage with the two. That's why it costs 200 to do, but. Well, it ain't the universe, but it's not too bad. But anyway, yeah, that ability uh, flicks MP damage as well as HP damage. Yeah, he threw basically a planet at us. Not quite Sephiroth throwing basically the whole galaxy at us by ex exploding it or whatever, but pretty close. You know? Yeah, let's go and heal ourselves, even though I don't really need to. Actually, maybe I should uh, keep myself quiet for a second to show off the awesome battle music, so I'll wait for her to cast her spell and then let it run naturally and just show it off. It's a really cool battle theme. Maybe not my favorite, but I really like it. I just like the, the style of the music in this game, just the way it works, so... amount of damage from that thing. Uh, I think it also it can also lower your SP if I recall. So yeah, let's use some advent. Why not? I can I can take another attack from this guy. Okay, I guess doing this attack kind of dulls out the music anyway. But yeah, I just like the kind of the chime as we're fighting God himself. Oh yeah, I probably should be starting to use all my buffs now. Because we're this is it. Use every item you've got in your inventory, you know, to finish this guy off. So that way, you know, you can, you know, not take forever to beat this guy. I mean, like I say, he's got 12,500 HP. So uh, I'm not gonna use the keys successes because I've got because that lowers my ring enough to where I can't. I mean, yeah, I could technically use like um, the like uh, gold hourglass or whatever or uh, the uh, like bronze dagger to help with that. Um, I think there's something else we can do as well. But anyway, I'm going to use the um, 
Uh, let's start with some third keys until I can get just used to the pattern. Yep. No, I'm not used to the pattern yet. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, I'm actually surprised I got criticals on that. What's, with, what's up with the world shooting mind bullets at me? You know? uh, let's go ahead and use, let's see, let's use Moon Swallow that makes all of our attacks critical for a while. Let's see if I can use third key again. There we go. Although I didn't need to crit because of the moon swallow. But. Yeah, look at that. I'm doing like, like 1,200 damage per attack on this guy. Oh yeah, black a bit. I'll definitely have to heal after this because of how much damage it does. So. Oh yeah, I guess I could be using third keys on keys as well. I didn't even think about doing that. <laughs> Let's cast arc. Yeah, it's almost like it's counting down to our doom or something like that with this, you know. I'm afraid to use like fifth keys or seventh keys just because I'm not a, you know, um, I'm using the mind's eye. So even though I know where all the placement is, I feel like I'm going to mess up on it. So yeah, unfortunately, Moon Swallow is basically a one-time turn. Oh well. Still, even without critting, we're still going to do a decent amount of damage. That's almost a thousand damage per attack. So. Yeah, take the power of an angel against God, you know? Almost like Lucifer against God himself when you think about it. And we got the blue abyss. Yeah, all the colors of the rainbow is he's attacking us with everything. Yeah, a decent amount of damage, but yeah, may as well as active. Whoops. Yeah, you have to hit you have to hit Keith's thing pretty early in his in his run, so. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do monkey's paw because that's too, too weird. Because it's a, a regular speed. So, oh yeah, I could do a, I could do silver hand on uh, myself and then. Uh, um, I don't know if you can mix a uh, uh, silver hand and, and the key just because of the way it works. So, I don't know. I'm trying to think of any other abilities I could really use on this fight. I'm just trying to look and see if there's anything cool to really use. So. Yeah, it only works on... Yeah, let's do that. Since it'll double our attack pattern, so... Yeah, let's go ahead. You know, with that, let's go ahead and use a... Uh, um, seventh key. Ah, oh well, we got six attacks on it. That's still pretty good. Take that, God. And so, our battle came to an end. The god, awakened by human hands, was returned to sleep once again by human hands. On the morning after, a refreshing breeze blew across Wales, and the horrible events leading up to yesterday seemed like nothing more than a bad dream. Soon, it was time to say farewell to everyone.
keep our handsome vampire grew weary of the hustle and bustle of the outside world, and so he returned once again to his peaceful castle in Transylvania. I wonder how many centuries he'll sleep this time. Good night and sweet dreams, dear friend. Master Zhu Zhen, our brave Taoist adept, has gone back to Shanghai to mend the disruptions in the energy fields of China. You taught us so much, Master Zhu Zhen. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And please, try not to overexert yourself. Our beloved spy for hire said she planned to go home to Paris. But she joked about how her next assignment was probably already waiting for her. So, there's no telling where she might be right now. Hallie, that cute little street boy we met in London, set sail from Southampton with his mother, Kodelka, to find his long-lost father in America. Finally, they'll be able to live together as a family. I pray you'll all find happiness. As for me, I'm headed for Zurich, where my mother's waiting. With Yuri, of course. And thus, everyone lived happily ever after. Ah, what a fun game. Uh, Shadow Hearts, it's been a while, but I'm glad I played you once again. And we see Yuri and Alice just sleep on the train while we watch the credits roll. Uh, what, a, what a journey it was. Uh, what was it, 40 plus episodes or whatever till we got to this point? Not bad itself, about a 20, I think it was like 20 to 30 hour game depending on what you're doing. Final boss was uh, epic enough. Unfortunately, not enough crazy attacks really to make it, well, I guess there was the one attack where he throws, basically destroys a plane and throws like the meteorites at, which is kind of cool. Too bad they had done something crazier in other games, but we can just ignore that for the time. So what to say about the game? Um, Story-wise, I think it's a really interesting story. It's different from others. Yeah, we get the, and yeah, the, I'll, I'll let it play for a little bit, but, uh, you know, look it up yourself if you want to see it here, the full credits of the game. Um, but the story was interesting. I mean, yeah, we do the whole save the world, but with the mixture of, like, different mythologies and Cthulhu mythologies, it's a bit different this time. The whole twist of, like, Yuri fighting with himself and fighting the malice of monsters that he had beaten over the years. I thought that was a cool concept, the idea of... You know, what happens to all those random encounters and stuff like that in, in games? What if they all had a, a, a pure hatred for the hero because of what he'd been doing? And, you know, and that came up in the malice. And obviously it's easy to clear it out and all that, but it gives you kind of a, di a different challenge to try and figure out like when to run through dungeons and when to clear the malice out, you know? And I like the fact that halfway through the game you switch it to Alice because she takes on his burden uh, to try and keep him alive. You know, shows their care for each other, and yet we never get the three words to, they say to each other during the main story. But that's just Japanese culture of how it is. They always wait to the last second for declarations of love. Uh, music was fantastic in this game. It had a, a, a nice vibe of like colorful, creepy, you know, uh, like foreign sounding with the whole, you know, some of the creatures in the game. Uh, kind of ran, ran the game, but I had a lot of the creepy themes I really liked on it. Um, characters, I liked all the characters on it. They were obviously they're archetypes, but they were lovable. Yuri, the the stupid, the stupid protagonist who with a heart of gold, that type of well, maybe not a heart of gold, but he learns to have a heart of gold. But uh, you know, confident and all that. Alice, the the meek, the meek healer who has her own type of strength more than anyone else. Um, Zhu Jin, the the wise old man. Keith, the narcissist. Well, I don't know if I call him a narcissist, but the vampire. Margaret, the spy, which interesting enough, Margaret's actually based off an actual real life spy who uh, who got hung, I believe, in like during World War II or something like that. But yeah, she's based off an actual real person. I think that's even the design of her character was based off her. Yeah, you could look it up. I think it's her actual name, like Margaret Zuella or whatever. Um, you know, the, the the fancy spy Haley, the 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 London street rat, you know. Uh, who uh, who has direct ties to the hero from the previous game, which was a nice touch. Um, 
trying to think what else. Uh, gameplay, I thought was really interesting. The whole Judgment Ring system added a little bit of a twist to an RPG instead of pressing X to win. You know, just spamming the X button to attack things. You actually had to pay attention to the Judgment Ring. Otherwise, you wouldn't either get attacks in at all or you could find a way to maximize your damage. Kind of like Mario and Luigi where they did the those the dodging system and stuff like that. But this is like one of the first of its kind to do something like this, which was pretty neat. And they would continue at the, the, for the other two games in the series. And they would refine it a little bit more, especially in the second one, which is probably considered my favorite out of them. But playing this again, it, it brought back a lot of memories and a lot of nostalgia for it. And Yeah, it took me a while to get back into the Judgment Ring system, because even though I play tested this before, playing the game again. I, I did kind of a half playthrough. I don't usually play through the whole games completely before I record it, but I at least do a, a bit just to remind myself what I need to do in the game and, and so I can be a bit efficient at it. Uh, if I had been doing this from scratch without knowing what to do, it would probably take me double the time and everything, but um, for RPGs, I don't mind putting the more effort into it on that. So um, i trying to think what else to say. But I, I thought there was a decent amount of side quests. I, I wish there had been a f few more, and I wish there had been a bit more character interaction between the characters. I feel like there should have been just a, a, a twinge more because I feel like some characters kind of get sidelined during some of the story, but you would have to extend the story, and they do that a bit in the second game, so they do approve upon it. And this was a proof of concept, you know, the whole Judgment Ring system and everything, what that was new. And it wasn't sure if it was going to catch on. It did for at least for a couple of games. Um, too bad this series kind of dropped after the third one. Um, I, I remember the third one not doing as well, and I kind of understand why if you play that game. Not that it's terrible, it's just you can tell it's different from this. And I do like the fact that this game had a few levity moments in it outside of the pure darkness that Kudelka was for the most part. Um, unfortunately, with the second and third game, they kind of go almost more to the goofy than the horror aspect. Although the second game does a little bit, uh, keeps it centralized. The third game, not so much, but we'll go over that if we ever get to that game. And the voice acting, yeah, is early 2000s cheese for the most part. There were a couple good voice actors in there, not the two heinous but there was a couple that were like eh, you know but uh, that's just how it was back in their early days and thank you Sagnon for making this game uh, I don't even know if they if the same people work on the sequel I think some of them did but yeah the third game not so much if I recall but still thanks for this uh, different game out of series something different from your classic fantasy uh, genre something not quite modern with a little bit of a twist with the demons and everything with that and uh, anyway, we get a nice little ending with the, the characters just sleeping in the, the cart there, you know. Yuri started off hating to be around her, but then, you know, found her kind of cute, and then later on it became more than that, especially if she saves your life, but anyway, let's just let them sleep and uh, enjoy the rest of the car ride, folks. Uh, if only, hopefully you have someone like that in your life, viewers, that you can just kind of nap next to. But anyway, I'll let the rest of the credits roll and what comes after it. So I hope you enjoyed my playthrough of Shadow Hearts. Uh, I've got one bonus episode to do with the other ending of the game, something I call the true ending, and showing off uh, like the what happens if you get all the bestiary and all that. So I'll let it run out. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next game. As the warlock said in the end, even if an age of winter comes bringing the harshest hardships, I intend to live on with my new family. The prince of the Austro-Hungarian Empire is assassinated. Summer that same year, the Great War one began. The end.